Anytime you click off that video, Duana, it's going to stop playing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Midstream Mana, where we are connecting as community in this digital space. We are carving out time in the midstream of the week, in the middle of the day, for the express purpose of us learning to flow with God. Midstream Mana is one of the many ways Eden Theological Seminary lives out its call, which is to strengthen the life of the church, to enliven critical reflection on faith, and to support bold Christian discipleship. And so if you are interested in pursuing theological education that culminates in a degree or offers you continuing education opportunities or deepens your biblical and theological understanding, Eden has something for you. And so I encourage you to check us out at www.eden.edu or go ahead and send a message through this Facebook page and tell them Dr. Letsum sent you. So you all, let's get to the manna for this week. The scripture is found in Mark chapter four, verses 35 through 41, where it says, on that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat on the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And waking up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, Be silent, be still. And then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that the wind and the sea obey him? For the next few moments, I wanna preach from the subject, move forward. Won't you pray with me? Eternal God, we ask that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. 
it was another long day of ministry and the ministry portion was behind them. Jesus had sat in a boat to teach the multitude in parables. Now when evening came, rather than go back to the shore that they'd come from, he lets them know that it's time to move forward. He wants them to cross over to the other side, to enter Gentile or unfamiliar territory. And in response to Jesus' command, the disciples do two things. They leave the crowd behind and they take him in the boat just as he was. And that's where I want to hang my homiletical hat this afternoon, because I find the disciples' initial response instructive for us. And based on it, I want to submit to you today that following Jesus means moving forward. You see, it's not about going back. If ever the Lord actually does send us back or tells us to look back, it's usually to learn a lesson or perhaps amend a wrong so that ultimately we can move forward because new life and new territory, new relationships, new breakthroughs, new answers, new opportunities, new power, new peace, new joy are all ahead of us and not behind us. If we are living with stuff today that should be put in yesterday, it's gonna prevent us from moving forward. We'll be held up in the present, or we're gonna be so encumbered that we won't be able to take the steps we need to follow behind Jesus. So I'm just here to remind somebody that you may need to close some doors before God will open another, you might need to break some attachments before God gives you some breakthroughs. You might need to let go before God says, a let there be. Because moving forward means being ready to declare that the past, not our whole past, but the holding us up past, regardless of whether it was good or bad, really is over. So that we can recognize that those parts of the past are the Goshen to our promised land, the Haran to our Canaan, and the Gethsemane to the Garden of Resurrection. Let the past fade into the past instead of making it a present partner so that we can move forward. Because sometimes it's the past and sometimes it's people, which might be the reason why the first thing the disciples did was to leave the crowd behind. At some point, we have to decide if this journey with Jesus is really worth it. If it is worth sometimes walking alone, worth not being able to tell everyone everything that God is telling us, or just simply believing and trusting that God will send the right walking partners for the places for which we are headed. Because sometimes moving forward means doing it with nothing and no one in the simple faith that God will add to us as we go. Because y'all, if the crowd has dwindled, if it's not as many people as before, if we're doing a bit more of alone time, we might be about to cross over. When God moves us forward, we often have to travel light. God strips us of all the unnecessary baggage and attitudes, actions, affinities, and attachments that keep us held to the past. And that's why I believe the disciples take Jesus just as he was. Like they don't grab a bunch of extra stuff as security blankets, they just take Jesus. Because moving forward means trusting Jesus enough to supply what we need. It, it means trusting Jesus to send somebody with it or show us how to get it or simply allowing God to supply the need all by God's self. Trust Jesus because the one who we believe to be our Jireh will become our Jehovah. And if we are counting on something or someone other than Jesus to supply our needs, then we're going to be bound and blocked by idols that we have put in God's place. We will be too afraid to move from these sources of provision so that it's the Lord who is leading the way. In this passage, Jesus charts the course, not the disciples. Jesus decides that it's time to cross over to the other side. And y'all, let's be real. Because crossing over is a challenge. It's a challenge to accept God's timing to determine when we are to move. It's a challenge to accept God's direction to determine where we are to go. 
And to the disciples' credit, they do not try to reschedule the voyage for a more opportune time, like maybe after they've rested up a bit. They don't try to set a new itinerary based on what works for their schedule and their resources. They don't even map out another route because they think they know a quicker, easier way because after all, they are fishermen and they know about the water and its roots and Jesus is only a carpenter. Instead, for once, they just followed. Verse one tells us that he got into the boat to teach the people. The disciples got into the boat at some point after him so that when Jesus tells them that it's time to cross over, they went to work following his orders. Get this. Jesus isn't a passenger. He's the captain. He sets the course for this journey. Jesus isn't going with them. They're going with Jesus. But they cannot go with Jesus without obeying Jesus, just like we cannot follow the Lord without obeying the Lord. Y'all, how we get to where Jesus is taking us will influence, if not determine, who we are once we get there. The act of moving forward, of following Jesus to the next place, is what prepares us for the next place. By moving us forward, Jesus is getting us fit for what is ahead. That's why only Jesus can chart the course. And although they're following his orders, although they are being obedient, a storm still comes up. On both occasions recorded in Mark's gospel of Jesus and his disciples crossing over to the other side, there's a storm. We, like the disciples, do not always get to move forward without challenges, obstacles, or hindrances. They try to stop us, but they will only succeed if we let them. This storm had the appearance of destroying them. High winds, strong gales, and opposition often comes to make us think that we too will drown. We can be on the boat like the disciples, still afloat, and the fear of the possibility is enough to abort the trip because storms often make us think that we will lose everything or that which is most important, that we will be destroyed in the process. And that's why moving forward is not for the faint of heart because it might break our hearts. It's not for the fearful because it is often scary. It is not for the rebellious because one can only make it if they obey. It's not for the idolaters because false gods won't save us. It's not for the comfort and convenience crowd because it often requires a sacrifice. But do you know who moving forward is for? Y'all, I think moving forward is for the willing because that that is the first quality needed in order to eat the good of the land. Moving forward is for the loving because perfect love still casts out every fear. Moving forward is for the faithful who like Abraham will not let distrust make him waver, but was fully convinced that God is able to perform what God has promised. Moving forward is for the focused who will look to Jesus, who is the pioneer and perfecter of their faith. Moving forward is for the correct Courageous, who will stand with shaking knees, who will work with trembling hands, who will speak with quivering voices because they are convinced that God is still a present help in the time of trouble, a refuge and a rock and a strong tower and a fortress and a shelter in the time of storm, knowing that it is worth moving forward in spite of the storms and the setbacks and the struggles because it's the only way to get to the other side. What this scripture shows us is that if we follow Jesus, if we move forward with the Lord, y'all, we may get wet, blown and buffeted by strong winds. We might get seasick or be scared to death, but with Jesus, we can make it to the other side. So move forward with Jesus, move until faith becomes sight and vision becomes realities and dreams thought deferred are delivered and promises come to pass. 
Move forward like Jesus past your Monday Thursday betrayal, your crucifixion Friday, your waiting Saturday until you get to your resurrection Sunday. Move forward and quit fretting about the how. Instead, I want you to rearrange the letters and remind yourself that the question may be H-O-W, but the answer is found in your W-H-O. For the Lord is the one who will make a way somehow. The hymn writer wrote, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea, when the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me, I wonder what I have done that makes this race so hard to run. And then I say to my soul, don't worry. I say to my soul, move forward because the Lord will make a way somehow. And when the load bears down so heavy and the weight is shown across my brow, there's a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. We've got the who and God's got the how. So y'all, let's move forward. Thank you.